What are the elements that successful people have in common? What values help assure success in today's ultra-competitive world? Join us as we explore the lives of some very successful individuals. Welcome to Secrets of Success, the program about people of strength, people of persistence, people who are successful in business. These are their stories. People often ask in business circles, why do I think that we're successful? And I have to stop and quantify that. Meet Wayne Heisinger, Jr. Successful in terms of money or successful in terms of what I think success is? Wayne, Jr., as he is widely known, oversees a business empire worth billions, founded by his father, H. Wayne Heisinger, Sr. In the last three and a half years, I've become president of Heisinger Holdings. A holdings company owns the Miami Dolphins, Dolphin Stadium. Touchdown, Dolphins! Wayne was obviously a people person. He was uh, a leader. People were drawn to him. We own uh, numerous thousands of acres of South Florida real estate. My first impression of Wayne was that uh, he was a very good person, good-hearted person. Banking interests, marinas, boat building operations, tree farms. Business-wide, he had, had a big shoes to fill with the success of his father. At one time, we had the unique distinction of being the only individual to own three major sports franchises at the same time. Like his father, great ideas, very, very quick. We own the Miami Dolphins, the Florida Marlins, which was our startup baseball team that began play in 1993, ultimately winning the World Series in 1997. And the Florida Panthers, which began play in 1995 and went to um, the Stanley Cup playoffs uh, in their second year of play. The Heisinger story begins in South Florida in the early 1960s. Wayne Heisinger Sr. started literally with nothing. When my mother and father were married, Wayne Sr. sold his pickup truck to buy my mother's engagement ring. With few prospects, Wayne Sr. began working with his father in construction. But he soon found an opportunity to run his own business in the waste disposal industry. He started with a loan from my, from my mom's parents and bought a single truck down here in South Florida. My mom used to tell stories of uh, holding the flashlight for dad at the, at the, in the evening time so that he could repair the truck. And every morning he'd leave early before the sun rose to start the route. And he'd complete his route picking up garbage by noon, come home, change clothes, put on a suit, and uh, go back out on the street to sell a new business. Building the new company consumed most of Wayne Sr.'s time. My parents were divorced when I was five years old. My father was a hard charger and, and wasn't around so much growing up. Uh, so my mother decided that she would move back to Chicago. So I grew up in a five-room house, if you include the back porch, on uh, 63rd and the tracks in Chicago, Six Lane Street. In the early days, I didn't see Dad very often, just a handful of times a year. He was busy uh, building waste management, which ultimately became the world's largest uh, garbage removal uh, company. As he became more successful, we started to spend more time together. But there were years where we saw him probably four or five times in the whole year. The divorce left Wayne Jr. with a deep longing to be more a part of his father's life. I think that it, uh, that it affected me as a, as a young man. There was not a strong force in the house. Mom tried as she would, but she was always mom. And so I think I was a little bit more of a rebel during high school. I was out there um, partying, running around. Uh, there were nights that I did not come home and did things that I'm probably not very proud of today. After eight years in Chicago, Wayne's mother moved him and his younger brother Scott back to Florida so they could be closer to their father. Wayne Sr. always took care of his family, but there was still a dramatic difference in living with his mother and the life Wayne Jr. experienced visiting his father. 
But there was a disparity between how I lived with my mother, which was clean and comfortable and, and, and more than adequate, certainly. But when I'd go to visit Wayne Sr., it was uh, over the top. They had a 90-foot motor yacht at the time and a uh, number of cars and had uh, jet planes with the corporation. So it was, it was different. I was 15 years old, and uh, we were attending different high schools. Wayne Jr. didn't know it at the time, but meeting Fonda Michelle Hicks would eventually change his life in a major way. She was dating a friend of mine, and I went on a blind date. We spent the day water skiing behind our 13-foot whaler and had a fabulous time. That night, we all decided to go uh, roller skating, and my mother drove me to the roller skating rink, and much to my surprise, I had no date. I flat out told my girlfriend, who was supposed to be along with us as his blind date that evening, I told her in no uncertain terms that she would not be going with us that evening. Fonda made sure that her date didn't show up as well. That was pretty shameful too. Just dumped him. Fonda and I began a wonderful relationship. We had your typical South Florida teenage kid romance. She never believed that our family had a yacht or that we flew on a private jet to go fishing in Mexico. Dad has, a, has this and dad has that down in Fort Lauderdale. And my standard response was, yeah, right. Wayne and Fonda's summer romance turned out to be just that. It was a short relationship. It lasted the summer. It was very intense and uh, I cared about it very much. For some reason, the phone calls kind of tapered off. I was a young man and I was looking for a bad girl and she was a good girl. And what I began to realize was that I was a summer fling. So I said goodbye to her and we kept in touch throughout the years as her mother worked in the principal's office at my school and kept tabs on me as I visited the principal numerous times throughout my high school career. It would be 13 years before Wayne and Fonda were truly together again. Wayne Jr. graduated from high school and continued on to college. I've always loved my dad, even though we didn't get to spend a lot of time together. I had an admiration and a desire to be very much like him and to spend time with him. And so I knew that if I went to college, that then I could go on to, to work with him someday. But as his college graduation grew closer, Wayne Jr.'s plans were shattered with his father's announcement that he had decided to retire from waste management. And I remember thinking to myself, good gosh, what am I gonna do with my life now? I mean, I'd always known that I was gonna work at waste management and it trained for that my whole life. Whether it was at the landfill picking up garbage at age 12, whether it was grinding containers and working on the back of a truck, or whether it was doing sales uh, as I went through college. Wayne Sr. assured his son that he could still work for the company, but Wayne Jr. wasn't interested. His heart had been set on working with his father. I was really very unsure of what the future held for me. I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do. But Wayne Sr.'s next business venture in 1987 would soon put his son's uncertainty to rest. So take care of everybody on your list. Make it a blockbuster holiday. More movies, more nights. Wayne Sr. made an investment in a small company called Blockbuster Video. At the time, it was himself and two of his partners from Waste Management. And they were going to simply be a passive investor with David Cook in this incredible startup video company. Wayne Sr.'s role in the new company would not okay. remain passive for long. Sure. A, a difference in philosophy regarding how best to grow the company That's led to David way. Cook retiring from actively running Blockbuster and selling his shares to Wayne Sr. Well, at that point, Wayne Sr. was in the position of, I need to protect the investment of my other two friends as well as myself. So he took over the helm of Blockbuster Video, which coincided uh, with the time of my graduating from school and so I was able to get involved in another corporation. Wayne Jr. entered Blockbuster as he had all his father's businesses at the ground floor. He began as a store employee, worked his way up to store manager, and eventually became a district manager. From there, he moved to special projects, working directly with Wayne Sr. and the executive staff. It was an adjustment for me because I was treated no differently than any of the other employees. Uh, oftentimes people say that father-son relationships don't work in business. Uh, I've been blessed. It, it has worked for Wayne Sr. and I, but it was definitely an adjustment for me. He's as intense at work as he is at play. And spending time with him in the workplace really lent an insight to why I did not get to spend much time with him growing up. 
As Wayne Jr. was advancing through the ranks at Blockbuster, Fonda re-entered his life. She was living in Phoenix, uh, working for Procter & Gamble, and she was on a fast track then to become a, a plant manager. And she called me up and said, I'm going to town visiting my, my folks. Would you like to get together? They'd kept in touch since their summer romance, but hadn't seen each other in five years. They made plans to spend an evening together catching up. That one night would become a, a week-long date, at which time I knew that there was something special there, something that I hadn't felt with anybody else that I'd ever dated. In many ways, Wayne was still the fun-loving boy Fonda had dated when they were 15. But she also recognized several new traits in him. He was a very young man, very energetic, very idealistic, very excited about business prospects, very excited about this whole world that was opening up to him. When we return, Wayne Heisinger Jr. builds business success and wealth, but still longs for something more. I never really felt fulfilled. I was always searching for that next great adventure or that next great business deal. After 13 years apart, Wayne Heisinger Jr. and Fonda Hicks were together again. And after a long distance relationship that lasted almost a year, Fonda moved from Arizona to Florida to be with Wayne. She would go on to say that she knew in her heart of hearts that I was the right person and that she saw wonderful things in me that I never saw in myself. And ultimately we were married 14 years ago. Wayne Jr.'s professional life was advancing as well. Blockbuster became the largest video retailer in the world, at one point opening a store a day for several years. But late in 1994, Wayne Sr. sold the company to Viacom and began looking for new business territory to conquer. Ultimately, the opportunity presented itself for Wayne Sr. to get involved with another old associate and get back in the garbage business. My uncle at that time also owned a large garbage company in Florida, and they merged the two together, creating Republic Services. Republic Services was designed to be a conglomerate. So while looking for diversified investments, the automobile industry drew Wayne Sr.'s attention. We started AutoNation. Uh, unfortunately, as we started to grow our mega used car superstores, we found that the margins weren't as good as that we hoped that they would be. Equally troubling, when the stock market began to focus on the hot technology sector, the Republic Services conglomerate lost favor with Wall Street. Seeking to become a company focused on only one industry, the Heisingas spun off several of Republic's assets into new public companies and sold other assets outright. As for AutoNation, they phased out used car sales and became a new car dealership. Ultimately, uh, AutoNation became the largest car dealer in the world with over $20 billion of revenues on an annualized basis. Wayne Jr. eventually became a vice president at Heisinger Holdings. Bill Pierce was a senior executive in the company at the time and served as a mentor to Wayne Jr. Clearly, he lacked the focus necessary to be successful, I believe, in business. While he had a great business mind, I would say that, that, uh, that he didn't focus to the extent that he could stay with, with, with us with one project to see it all the way through. Wayne Jr. had purchased Blockbuster stock while the company was still very young, and that stock's value had risen astronomically. Wayne and Fonda were living a life that most people can only dream of. He loved to take big trips and take uh, all his friends and pack them up and, and go to exotic parts of the world. There were no limits. There were no boundaries. There were no standards. You know, when you pack up 25 adults and, and take them to the Caribbean or, or other exotic parts of the world, it doesn't always go according to plan, and people get in, in disagreements, and people would drink too much. He has had some regrets about leading some of those people in that crowd down the wrong path. In spite of his lavish lifestyle, something was missing. I was happy in my life, and I had everything that the world would consider uh, that you should have. Jet planes, yachts, big house a wonderful family, but I never really felt fulfilled. Eventually, Wayne Jr. began to get his bearings. It happened gradually and in an unexpected way, 
after meeting Captain Brad Fleetwood McDonald. He was a submarine captain. I was blessed to spend three days underway on a submarine coming from South Carolina to Florida. And he became an important influence in my life. He had patients that were just unbelief, and he had incredible wisdom. And he didn't seem to be searching like I was. I saw a calm and a peace in him that I had not seen in anybody else. Wayne Jr. began to have discussions with Captain McDonald about the differences in their lives. And he always referred me to the Bible. And he would quote scripture to me and say, this is what the Old Testament says of how to live your life. This is where I go when I have questions, and that's where I get my peace from because God resides inside of me. With Captain McDonald's influence, Wayne and Fonda found a church they liked and began attending. I'd listen to the message, and I'd try to be different. But at the end of the day, I found myself out doing the worldly things that I'd still done. I didn't understand how to change my life. Finally, while visiting a friend's church, Wayne Jr. heard a message that made a difference. The pastor at the end of a great service spoke about having a personal relationship with God. He said, why are you here? Why did God put you on this earth? Why have you been blessed with the things that you've been blessed with? I realized that I'd been given these incredible gifts, airplanes and boats and, and money and the, the ability to do most anything I wanted to in life. And I realized I was using it all for me. It was all being used selfishly. And in no way did I use any of it to glorify God. That night, Wayne Jr. chose a life of faith. Well, the primary changes I saw in when Wayne Jr. actually became a man of faith were, were quite dramatic. He no longer wanted to, to be associated or around certain types of, of behavior. The drinking stopped. The carousing stopped. And it was uh, the ability to, uh, to focus. He devoted himself to, to business in a way I had not seen him do before. And it also manifested itself with respect to the commitment and the time and the effort necessary to understand the business from top to bottom and, and the patience. But I had more patience with my wife. I had more patience with my children and all those that I came into contact with. I began to experience the peace that I had seen in Captain Brad the sense of searching for something more began to subside. Of course, no one was more affected by the changes in Wayne Jr. than Fonda. My immediate response was, have you lost your mind? She liked it. It was a, a wonderful benefit. I was a different person than I was. The obvious changes were immediate. He had a change in attitude that was profound. And to me, it was very frightening because this was the first time that he had made such a radical change in his life, and I was not even vaguely a part of it. But Fonda would soon see Wayne Jr.'s new life put to the test when he was faced with a number of serious challenges. I saw him living a life that was more settled, happier, even though our conditions at that time did not warrant that. His mother was living with us. She was very ill. Ultimately, it turned out that she had cancer. We were so, so close to she raised me. He focused on his children. He focused on his relationship with them, on his relationship with his mother. And ultimately, over the next nine months, she lived and, and died with us. There was several business crises that were coming literally one after another. A short period later, a month later, I lost my grandfather. He was also instrumental in raising me as a, as a child. And so losing him shortly after losing mom was really devastating in my life. He focused on me. He encouraged me. Even in times when I knew I had let him down. But my faith gave me the ability to be strong for my wife, for my children who had watched their 